Hey there, I'm Joshua Bardwell, and I just want to take 30 seconds of your time before we get into the video in case someone has stumbled across this video randomly and doesn't realize what the context is. This is a playlist of videos teaching you how to build a FPV, first person view freestyle or racing drone from start to finish. If you've stumbled in in the middle, Go down to the video description, there's a playlist link, start at the beginning of the playlist and work your way through. If you are working your way through this video, I want to remind you that there is a Discord server, a Discord chat server uh, for Quad Camp Online. There's a channel over there where we provide support uh, for the people who are working through this project. If you have any questions, you can ask them down in the YouTube comments, absolutely, but if you need a little bit more real-time help, you maybe will get better luck over in the Discord server. Link in the video description. I also want to remind you, thanks to Rotor Riot for helping make this project a reality. And if you are thinking of working your way through this project, you can get all of the equipment for, to build the quadcopter in just one credit card swipe from the Rotor Riot store. Yeah, you can buy the stuff elsewhere as well. One piece here, one piece there. Pay too much for shipping. Accidentally buy the wrong thing. You get it all. And there's a link to that down in the video description. On with the video. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. Today, we're gonna to learn about the Betaflight pre-arm mode. The Betaflight pre-arm mode is a way that you can save yourself from serious injury by making it just a little bit harder for you to accidentally arm your quad. You see, if you set up arming on a switch, that's great. So arming on a switch, it, stick arming, who does that? Any, we shouldn't do that anymore. Stick arming was a artifact of a time when we had four channel transmitters and they were like, well, how in the heck are we going to arm and disarm a quadcopter? You know, with a plane, we just raise the throttle. As soon as you plug in the battery, the plane's ready to go. And they were like, I know, we'll just hold the stick down into the left or to the right and that'll be our arming. But we don't do that anymore. We don't need to do that anymore. We can just use one of our many, many channels. Most radios, even the cheapest ones have at least six channels. And many of them go 8, 16, even more channels. We just flip a switch and we arm and disarm. But the problem is this. It's so easy to, when you bend over, you pick up your quad, you're carrying everything and you, blah, you flip the switch. Ah, you forgot, you didn't unplug your battery. You know, I almost said you forgot to unplug your battery, but that's a mischaracterization. You, you don't, you, that's like saying I went out of the house today and I forgot to put on pants. No. Something far more serious is going on if you walk out of the house without realizing you haven't got pants on. You may want to check with the doctor. And if you pick up your quad and the very, the very first thing you do as you go to pick up your quad is not to unplug the battery, you gotta, you ought to have your head checked. Like, like if you walked out of the house with no pants on, you ought to have your head checked. As a basic safety procedure, drill this into yourself. Unplug the quad as soon, unplug it before you pick it up if you can. Don't be afraid of it, but be safe with it. And the very first thing you do when you when you go to pick it up after flying should be to unplug the battery as soon as possible. But if you don't do that, then here's a safety procedure you can use to make it just because there's layers, right? There's layers of safety. And, and pr safety procedures are one, but we screw up, we forget, we walk out of the house without pants on sometimes. And for that, it's good to have the pre-arm mode. Pre-arm mode prevents you from leaving the house with... I've belabored the analogy. Let's learn about the pre-arm mode. In order to set up the pre-arm mode, the first thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to designate a second switch. So right now, this is my arming switch, arm and disarm. And the way pre-arm will work is that I will need to pull a second switch in order to make the quad arm. So one, then two. So I am going to press menu and then page to get to the mixer screen. And this is the same thing you did when you set up your arming mode. I'm gonna, now channel five is being used for arming. So let's just use channel six for my pre-arm. I'm gonna highlight channel six and press enter. And now we're setting up a new mix. I'm gonna go down to the source and press enter. Now the source is flashing, meaning we're editing it. And I'm just going to pull whichever switch I've decided I'm going to use for my pre-arm mode. I'm going to pull the momentary switch one time. And sure enough, now it has filled in SH as what I'm going to use for this line. Then I'm going to press exit. 
I'm going to exit all the way out, and I'll just verify here that as I pull switch SH, I see the channel moving. And here in the Betaflight Receiver tab, as I pull switch SH, I can see AUX2 is moving. So the mapping is set up correctly. Now let's set up the pre-arm mode. I'm going to go to the Modes tab, and I'm going to scroll down to find the pre-arm mode. And I'm going to add range. I'm going to select the AUX channel that I chose, which in this case is AUX2, which is channel 6, since the AUX channels start numbering from channel 5. Channel 5 is AUX1, channel 2 is AUX6. And as I pull that momentary switch, I can see the little uh, yellow tick mark moving, indicating that I've got channel is moving and this switch is controlling that channel. And then let's see, so the pre-arm, I'm gonna pull the switch to the pre-arm position, which is gonna be you know, pulled and I can see that that is high, it's at 2000. So I'm just gonna drag this over and hit save. And what I should see now is that as I pull that switch, the pre-arm mode becomes active. Now let's test this. And in order to test this, I'm gonna click the show hide unused modes option. And this will get rid of any modes that we're not using. So we only see the ones we are using, it makes it just the screen a little less cluttered. Now, in order to test this, I will need to disable the protection that Betaflight has. Normally, Betaflight will not activate the arming mode when you're plugged in to the configurator. And I can disable that protection by ticking this box. I understand the risks, the props are removed. Your props must be off. And in fact, I don't have a battery plugged in either. If your props are, uh, plugged in, are on and your battery's plugged in, you're about to arm your quad. Don't do that. Okay, I'm gonna now go back to the modes tab. And if I flip the arm switch, you can see that nothing is happening. But if I hold the pre-arm and then flip arm, now I have armed, yay. And I can disarm just by putting the switch back. And that's it, that's as simple as it is. To arm your quad, now you must hold the pre-arm and then arm. If you simply flip the arm switch by accident, then nothing will happen. Now in a previous video, I suggested that when you disarm your quad, you just raise your throttle slightly to help protect you from accidental arming. This is, is it a substitute for that? Hey, you could do that too, because you know, it's like how many safeties do you want on your firearm? Well, some people would argue not very many. Those people like to be able to shoot people as quickly as possible, but there's no reason why you should need to arm your quad super quickly. Or is there? Some people would argue that, you know, you ever had a situation where you like crash into a tree and you think you're about to lose it and you disarm and now your quad is going through the air and you're like, oh, if I could only arm again, I could fly away from this. Ah! You just watch in slow motion as the quadcopter into the concrete. Hey, if that's how you feel, maybe you would prefer to like, I don't know, maybe you don't want to use the pre-arm mode, but I recommend that all beginners, especially, set up a pre-arm mode to prevent you from accidentally arming the quad. And what's the downside of also raising the throttle just a little bit? Oh, so you got to lower the throttle before you, you have to do that anyway. These are all ways to help prevent you from arming accidentally. Well, okay, that is how you set up a pre-arm switch for your Betaflight quad. Now you know how to do it. I want to tell you, those of you out there who are clever may be thinking, you did that with two aux channels. Is there like a clever way you could do it with one aux channel through like complicated mixing? And the answer to that is no. And I know that because I just spent like 20 minutes trying to do it. And at the end, I realized why it wouldn't work. You, if you're going to use the Betaflight pre-arm mode, you have to give up two aux channels to get it to work. That's just a consequence. There is a way to do essentially this same logic in the Tyrannus. And I've got a video about that, which I'll link down in the video description if you want to try to set that up. It's a little bit complicated. The pre-arm mode is so much simpler. If you don't absolutely need the extra aux channel, just use the pre-arm mode. It's, it's the way to go. Thank you guys so much for watching. That is, are we done with the, is that it? Yeah. How have I gone this long with not making a video about this? This is such an important feature and I've just overlooked it. And that's why I'm so psyched about this budget build that I'm doing with Rotor Riot. Uh, because it's giving me an excuse to make tutorial videos about every single little minutiae of building and flying and setting up a quad in order 
I really hope that this series becomes just the go-to tutorial for how to build a quad. And I hope you guys are enjoying it and learn from it. I will continue. You know, if we basically finished the playlist because in the last video in the playlist, we got the quad in the air. And, uh, but I'm going to keep going with extra little bonus stuff that you can learn about because why not? But that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the video description. I'm, I always do my best to answer all the questions I get in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching. Happy flying.